Hey guys, welcome to this new series. Today we're going to start with a new project. We're going to be doing something very cool. We're going to go into hard surface, going back into Maya. So let's get to it. This is what we have right now. Uh, we're back here in Maya. Remember, every time we start with Maya, we need to go into our uh, set project and set our project. So I'm going to go here. And I already have my image in my, um, in my source images folder. So I'm going to go to the top view here. I'm going to say image plane right here, this little icon. You can also go into view image plane and it's this B. We're going to be doing this mechanical B, which I think looks very cool. I think it's a very nice project. Anyone with a basic understanding of Maya should be able to um, to complete it. So hopefully uh, you guys will be able to follow along and uh, yeah, just uh, work from this. Now, the first thing I need to do is I need to define what size this little B is going to be. Well, it's not a B, it's more like a um, um, firefly, right? Because it has a little light bulb down here. So I need to decide whether this is going to be a small B, a big B, because whenever you model inside of Maya, you want to make sure you're, you're modeling in real uh, scale or in world scale. That way, if you move this into other packages, such as Unity or Unreal or even for 3D printing, the thing will print or will be on the on the size that you intend it to be, rather than having everyone guess uh, what the size is going to be. So I would say this is probably going to be, what, like 10 centimeters. I think I want it to be like 10 centimeters, something like this. For my um, American friends, that would be like about three inches, um, roughly three, four inches. So I'm going to create a cube here and I'm going to change the scale on the cube on C to a hundred. That's a hundred centimeters. Sorry, not a hundred, 10. We're going to go 10. So that's going to be 10 centimeters. So that means that that's going to be roughly the, the size of the, of the thing. Now, going back into my previous, uh, um, what was it? Advice. Certain tools work a little bit better when they have more room and more space to work with. So what do I mean by this? If we were to model this as 10 centimeters, which it's not super small, but it's also not super big, certain tools like the bevel, the extrude, and others like those will have a little bit of an issue. So I'm actually gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's go 20 centimeters. It's gonna be probably something like this, right? Then later on, before we save everything or render or whatever, we can decide whether we scale it up or down. So one thing that's very important, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna select my image plane, I'm gonna rotate so that it's facing forward. You always, always, always want your objects to be facing on the side that they're normally facing, so something like this. We're gonna move this down so that it doesn't um, obstruct our view on the, on the ground plane here. And, uh, and now I'm gonna go to the top view and I'm gonna scale this image down so that the tip of the tail and the tip of the head line up as close as possible. So you can see that the image is not perfectly symmetrical. That's totally fine. We're just gonna do one side and then we're gonna mirror to the other side. There's a little bit of a, of a mismatch here on scales. Like this wing has a bigger like uh, gear right there. That's fine, we can we can work with that. It's not, not such a big deal. And uh, yeah, we're ready. Another thing I like to do is I like to grab my image plane here and change the alpha gain to something like 0.5 so that it's not like super, super white and uh, it's not as uh, uh, annoying on the eyes. And uh, we're ready to start modeling. So how do you approach a project like this? Well, what would be the first thing you do? There's some people that say go for each specific piece. Some people would say do the full body. Some others will go like go do all the details for one specific part and then jump onto the next ones. There's really no, uh, let's say, correct or proper way to do it. Everyone has its own um, sort of like process or, or procedure. I personally believe in doing like certain like blockings just to get the general shape of the object first and then refining each specific part. So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the sphere here. I'm just going to position the sphere right about here, which would be uh, the area with, where I would expect the head to be. So that's something like that. Uh, I will do another sphere, but I'm going to rotate this sphere 90 degrees. There's a quick shortcut here to, to make sure that you don't have to type in. If you press your letter E and click on your object, you can change this to discrete rotate and that will allow you to snap uh, the, the location here. So I'm going to move this here. I might even grab like the last vertice right there and with soft selection, which is the V key, I'm just going to give it a little bit of, a, of the shape. This is not the, the model I'm going to be using, it's just a a general approximation of where I would expect this thing to be. There we go. Let's go to the top view again. Now for this thing, this is kind of like a cylinder. So I'm going to go for a cylinder. Same deal, rotate this 90 degrees. Let's add a couple of divisions here. Whenever you're working on blockouts or blockings, however you're going to say it, uh, you don't want to spend that much time. It's just, it's just to get the general idea of where things are going to be. So for instance, this one would connect right about there. 
and I'm just like capturing the general volume. We're, some some of these pieces we might use to to create the uh, the body of the, of the little um, firefly, but some of the other ones uh, we'll just have to remodel. So for this thing right here, I will go for a sphere as well. So 90 degrees. Probably scale a little bit, so it's a little bit like this oval shape. Could even grab like like this, oh, like this pieces here. Let's do a little bit of selection just to give this sort of a uh, rhomboid shape. Not necessary. It's just gonna give us a, a better idea of how this thing is gonna look. Oh. Something like this. There we go. Now for the wings, I am again just since this is just the, the blocking stage. I'm just gonna go here into Mesh Tools. I'm gonna use my Create Polygon tool. And I'm just gonna create a huge polygon here that gives us the the rough shape of the element. It's it's totally an angle. Like this is not what we would use, of course. This is not what we're gonna use. It was just to give us an idea of of how would, how I expect this thing to to look. I'm gonna say mesh display reverse. Let's extrude this up. And yeah, this is this is an angle, but again, we're not going to be using this. Now, on the um, on the top side of this things, there's this sort of connection. So I'm going to use a couple of spheres here to indicate where these connections are going to be. And this is why this blocking stage is really important because on the on the top view, yeah, everything is flat, but on a 3D view, I would need to move these things to other positions, such as this one. And I know that these guys are going to be like moving. Uh, up in in space to to generate the proper connections with the rest of the of the elements. So let's go back to the top view. Uh, and now we have the the legs. So for the legs, I'm gonna create a little cylinder here. So this is the first leg, and then I'm gonna move this here. Make it smaller, of course, and then move it here. And then it has this like uh, like coils as a, as a little leg at the end. There we go. Now look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move the pivot point to the border or where the where the objects are. So D and then V to snap it to snap the pivot point. D and then V to snap it. And then I'm gonna parent this guy into this guy. So P this guy into this guy P. And now we have this little chain here. And what that would allow me to do is I'm going to be able to grab the first one. Uh, I'm actually, to, to save a little bit of time, I'm going to duplicate this guy. Uh, let's go object mode. Let's scale it up a little bit. It's going to be the, the back leg. And then I'm going to duplicate this, scale it in. And it's going to be this sort of like thing that we have here. So see how by, by rotating this, oh, actually, I forgot to freeze transformations. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Freeze. I don't think I'm going to be able. Oh, yeah, I am. OK, perfect. There we go. So same deal here. I'm just going to go one by one. You need to start with the, with the first one and then the other ones, because otherwise you're going to mess everything up. And now I should be able to, there we go, rotate this and create this little like front leg here. Uh, the rotation here, the scale, I'm going to go in. Ah, it should be. It's weird. It's like this. That's fine. It's just a blocking. So now I'm going to grab all of this parent uh, legs. I'm going to move them down to where I would expect them to be. Okay, rotate. And what we can do is I can select all of them and rotate at the same time and see how they're going to be bending like a like a like a leg. That, that's pretty much a rigging. Uh, we're, we're pretty much doing a very super fast rig here with that with the legs. But I can move this to like a, a ground plane. I would definitely need some sort of ground plane. So I'm going to create a, a floor here or actually rather than that, I'm just going to grab everything here. I'm going to go into world um, movement. Actually, Let's group it, move it up so that that leg is, is touching the ground. And now I know that that's the, the low point, right? That's the, that's the position that everything needs to, to move into. I'm going to reparent these guys right here because when we created the group, all of the parents broke. So this guy would be somewhere like there. 
same here. We're just going to repair it real quick. Move this down probably and have this touch the ground like this. There we go. So again, the only reason why we're doing this block out or blocking is um, to make sure that we understand how the general thing is going to look as a three dimensional object, because otherwise this flat element right here won't really allow us to to explore what we want. We're going to be modeling all the individual parts next, um, but it, it, it's always good to have this sort of thing. So I'm just going to grab all of the elements here like this, guys. It's going to hit shift, right click and then mirror option box. It's going to be world x negative and hit apply. And we're going to have the legs on the other side. Seems like we missed this one. Um, that's really weird. Let's try again. OK, that one's working. Oh, OK, I just need to grab this one. Huh. That's very weird. Let me see if by freezing transformations we get it to work. Nope. OK, I'm going to show you the old school way. I'm going to uh, control G, control D minus one on X, and that's going to give us the, the mirror on the other side. So now I know that this is going to be the, the general like look of the of this uh, Firefly. I'm going to grab this two guys as well and just mirror. There we go. And yeah, that looks like a like a good start. Um, again, this is going to be very important because it's going to allow me to model everything else even on other parts of the scene and then just get them into the into position. And this guy is going to be telling me where things should be at all times. So I'm going to grab all of these guys. I am going to combine them. The layer history, freeze transformation, center pivot. I'm going to create a new layer here, a new display layer. This is going to be called uh, blocking. And now we can start working on the different parts of our character. So let's go to the top view. I'm going to grab this blocking and let's turn it off. And uh, at this point, you can start with whatever piece you want. Some people like to start with the easiest parts first. Some people like to go with the difficult parts first. Uh, again, it's it's up to you which parts you really want to work with. We're going to be doing this in subdivision mode, or we're going to be doing this with subdivision in mind. So this is meant to be a, an asset for like a film or like a commercial, like a short, something like that. It's not going to be low poly. It's going to be a little bit higher poly, uh, similar to the grenade that we did a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, let's go. I think I'm going to start with the wings because I want to show you a nice technique that we use for modeling. And we didn't see this um, as clearly in the in the grenade one in the grenade uh, tutorial. So I'm going to use my quad draw right here, UV. No, sorry, uh, mesh tools. I'm going to create a polygon anywhere I want, like here. Small square going through the frame. As you can see, we have this like a uh, membranes going through the different parts of our, of our character. Well, we're going to build the skeleton first, and then we're going to fill in the the inner parts of the of the wing in a in a very easy way. You're going to see how. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to go into Quadro, and Quadro will allow me to start drawing the topology for this thing. Now, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, and there's three rules I want to make sure that I follow. I'm going to have a border on the outside. Actually, I'm going to start with the border just now. I'm going to make sure that this border is very clean because this border will allow me to have a very round and soft silhouette on the outside. The other rule is that I'm not going to use any triangles. I'm going to try to keep everything quad and everything has to flow um, like throughout this like mesh. Like I want this thing to be very, very soft. So I'm just going to continue here all throughout this line and we're going to end up right here. And if we go back here, we can start going on this area right here. And it's just a matter of drawing our mesh. This might seem a little bit slow. Uh, yes, it is a, s s certainly a, a slow process, but that doesn't mean that it's not important. Actually, it's, it's, it's way, way more important than you might think, because by having this clean topology, everything else, UVs, textures, everything is going to flow nicely. So how do we solve this, right? Like this thing wants to go here. And, and I said, I want to keep this in a, is a, as nice as, as possible, right? So I'm going to create a small square here. And this line won't flow uh, like around uh, the, the whole thing, because on this area, I want it to be a little bit sharper. So I'm going to keep it like this. And here, as you can see, we have a little bit of more of a, of a mesh. So as I mentioned, I don't want to have a square. I know that I don't want to have a triangle. So I know that there's another line of a frame coming through this area. So there's like this three frames coming here. There's 
two more frames coming here. So all of these lines are going to be connecting here. And here's where the, the cool thing about retopology and about uh, topology flow comes into play. I don't need all of these lines to flow into this point. I can make them flow to other parts of the model. So for instance, if I add another line here, I can combine them there. We're going to get like that. That's not a triangle because we're not going to be filling this in. This is part of the membrane. And then this one, instead of making it flow all the way down here, I can add another line here. See, and now instead of flowing again through this area, it's flowing outside to the outside of the of the element. So this line, see how it flows, this square allows me to 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 modify the the flow of the topology and make sure that this this, this doesn't go all the way over here and contaminate this very nice uh, border there. Similar to what we're going to do here, like I'm going to continue this here. And instead of making this go all the way down here, I'm just going to add another line here, and I'm going to make it flow to the outside like this. See how this guy flows out. And now this guy flows down. It's fine. Let's add another line there. And once it hits this area, I'm going to see how I can make it flow to uh, a nice area. So I can see that the, that the triangle ends right there. That's where the membrane ends. I already have a square here, so I'm going to make it a square. And just to solve this, I'm just going to make another square. And by relaxing this a little bit, see how this becomes a nice little flow there. So we still keep our outer edge, as you can see, but these things are flowing to the side. We're not letting them flow all the way down. Again, that's a very, very uh, important concept in, in subdivision modeling, because when we press number three, we want this outer edge to be very, very smooth. Now we can start like moving over here. So in this case, no need to simplify. Let's just keep two two lines going because we're going to need another two lines down here. And then see how this thing keeps flowing over here, here. We're going to have another one here. We can fill this there. And uh, if we need to fill it here, we do it like that. There we go. This one continues over here. Here. This one's going to flow to this area like that. And then from here, we're going to use this area right here to flow into this area right over here. We flow there. Let's add one more line there to create the the entry point for this uh, for this element like this. Let's combine there. Same deal here. Like don't don't be intimidated by weird like movements here on the on the topology side of things. Like if I need to, I'm gonna add one more element there. And if, if that's what we need to, to create the proper like flow there, that's fine. I don't mind adding a couple of extra edge loops to, to capture the proper silhouette of the element. Same deal here. We're just going to keep creating this mesh, making sure that everything flows as nicely as possible. Let's just keep pushing this guy to the top like this. Now here we have a little bit of a, of a traffic jam, right? Like there's a there's a lot of things going on here. There's going to be a lot of connections. And again, the the general rule of thumb that you want to follow is try to make sure everything flows in a in a predictable manner. So for instance, this line we're going to keep it clean, just a thing flowing like this. Now in here, do we need an extra edge loop? Yeah, maybe we do. We just add an extra edge loop here. We move a couple of these guys around, and that way everything flows in a nice uh, manner. So now if we take a look at our mesh, we're going to get this very nice uh, wing effect. You can see that this seems to be rounded, seems to have a little bit of thickness. So I'm just going to extrude the whole thing, move it forward, give it a little bit of thickness like this. And if we press number three, we should get this very, very nice mesh. Now, this is supposed to be a mechanical uh, element, right? So usually mechanical things have sharp edges, which is important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into edge mode. I'm going to select all the edges. It's going to take a little while. And I'm going to bevel. Now, why am I beveling and not just inserting an edge loop? Whenever you insert an edge loop, the edge is going to hold better, but it looks very machined. It looks very uh, like if I'm, uh, like a, an actual like super precision machine did the, did the job. And, and I find that for this kind of things, a, a bevel looks a little bit nicer. So I personally prefer the, the bevel here. Now to save myself a little bit of time, I'm going to do a trick here. I'm just going to select the upper, um, the upper edges here or the upper borders. I don't care about the lower ones and you're going to see why in just a second. 
there we go. So even this one's uh, like back here. Perfect. So we're gonna bevel. Uh, there seems to be a problem here. See that? When we bevel, oh, we missed this one. Let's bevel again. Oh, this one. Just make sure that the bevel looks clean everywhere, which it does so far. Yep, it does. And I'm gonna make the fraction a little bit bigger and I'm gonna add two segments, actually smaller. And what this will do is now when I press number three, we're gonna get this very nice sharp uh, edges all throughout the, the membrane of the wing. Now, uh, we also want that on the bottom. What can we do here? Well, I'm gonna center the pivot point which is going to be right there on the center. And I'm going to mirror this guy, but I'm going to mirror it on an, on the Y axis, negative Y on the bounding box, sorry, on the object mode, which is going to take the pivot point as the center point. And if we hit apply, I'm just going to get a middle line down here, which is perfect. We're going to be using that line later on for, for UVs. And, uh, and then we get the, and we also get the bevels on the backside. So cool, right? That, that, that seems to be working nice. So how do we do the membrane now? Well, what's the material that we're going to be using? Well, we're going to be doing it pretty similar to what we, do, we would expect in the real world. I'm going to go into mesh uh, tools, mesh tools, and I'm going to use my create polygon tool. I'm going to go here to the beginning and I'm going to create a polygon that goes around the whole border. I might need a couple of extra points to create this polygon like this. And I'm going to hit enter. Now, the only issue with this polygon is that, of course, it's it's an angle. This is going to be living. This is going to live right here. It's going to be just a flat plane that we're going to assign a material later on to, to make it uh, render very nicely. I'm actually going to center the pivot point. And remember this middle line that we just got from the from the from the uh, mirror. So I'm going to use a V snap to point to snap this to the middle center. So to the, to the middle point. So that thing's going to be exactly in the middle of the of the wing, which is uh, what we want. And later on, we're going to be painting some uh, like dirt on the on the borders here. And that's going to look very, very nice. So the only thing we need to do is we need to fix the fact that this is an angon. Um, again, there's a lot of different ways to do it. I'm going to use the cut tool. I'm just going to cut from one point to the other side and in any position where I see a little like vertice, I'm just going to try to to find another vertice on the other side to, to match it. Sometimes there will be one and other times we'll just have to create like this big plane. And the reason why we can get away with this is even though we might animate the wing later on and, and animate the whole thing, this is not gonna deform. Like this is, is, is just a solid pit. It's not gonna bend or anything. So, so having this like very intense geometry is, is actually not that big of a deal. There we go. So I'm gonna call this uh, wing membrane underscore geo and it's going to be wing frame underscore geo. I'm going to parent this into the wing frame. So now if I move the wing frame, everything else moves and I'm going to select this guy. I'm going to assign a new material. I'm going to assign a Lambert material. And I'm just going to turn transparency up and I'm going to add like a, like this bluish color that this thing has. That's very weird. Uh, let's delete history. It's supposed to be blue. There we go. Something like this. Just to just to be able to, to see through it, right? We're not going to be able to select through it, but we're going to be able to see through it. We're going to delete history for both of them. And now it's time that we turn on our uh, layer and we're going to position this where it's supposed to be, which would be right about there. We don't need to erase the, the uh, base mesh that we had. It, it's totally fine. Now let's go to the top view. And I am going to grab this guy and I'm going to mirror it to the other side. So mirror is going to be world x negative apply. And uh, if we want to match the concept, we're going to have to uh, do a couple of changes here. So uh, it's very weird that it's not... For some reason, it's not mirroring the, the parent. It just mirrors whatever is below it. So let's do it uh, old fashioned way. I'm just going to duplicate this guy minus one on X. And at this point, I'm just probably just going to like position it where it's supposed to be. As you can see, this is asymmetrical. 
Again, here's where, where you would need to evaluate whether or not you want things to be asymmetrical. I would strongly advise, advise against asymmetry at first. I'm actually going to control G to group it, duplicate the group, minus one on X, and then unparent this. And this guy as well. This groups we don't need anymore. So I know that we're not like copying the concept perfectly, but I would rather model everything symmetrical. And then at the end, at the render time, then we move things around and we scale them and we do other other movements because otherwise uh, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to control. So usually whenever you're modeling, you're gonna be modeling everything symmetrical and then you're gonna be breaking that symmetry. So there we go, that's the, that's the wing membrane done. Let's go for the light bulb. I, I think the light bulb is, is fun and we're gonna be doing some, some cool tricks here as well. So for the light bulb, I'm going to be using a curve. Um, these are, by the way, all of these techniques that I'm showing you here and, and a lot more are in our premium courses. So if you want to be, if you want to learn Maya and you, you feel like you need a, a little bit of, a, of an intro course, then just check the links down below there on the comments and, and we have everything you might need. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to create a curve starting from this point and creating like the, like the light bulb. Now we're not going to see the, the inside of the light bulb. Actually, that, that looks horrible. I'm going to go create uh, curve tools. I'm going to use an EP curve. That's really weird. Why is it? Why is it so sharp? Did I change something? Oh yeah, I did. So I'm just going to, I just double click here, the tool and reset tool to make sure that it works as I expected to. There we go. I'm just going to use my control vertices to give them a, a better shape. There we go. The first point should be right there. And now I'm going to grab this curve. And I'm going to go into my um, surfaces. I'm going to use a revolve. I'm going to use the C direction. I want to revolve around C so that we get this uh, light bulb. I am going to do 360. I'm going to, I want polygons. I want quads. General, I'm going to say press pan. Per span, apply. There we go. We're gonna get this very nice little thing. So the history, freeze transformation, and uh, yeah, this is this is working nice. The vertices there are, are combined. I am gonna give this thickness, so I'm gonna extrude it in to give the the glass thickness and the history and mesh display reverse to make sure that we have this. And when we press number three, we're going to have a, a, an element here. The reason I want thickness is because eventually we're going to be rendering this as glass. And by having thickness, the lights of ray are going to refract properly. And that's going to give us a very nice effect with the, with the little coil in here. Now, for the coil, I am going to use a spiral. So I'm going to create polygon primitives. Let's go for a helix. Let's move this helix up here. Rotate this uh, 90 degrees and 90 degrees like this. Let's make this uh, thinner. Radius, there we go. Uh, I count one, two, three, four, five loops. So I'm going to increase the, the loops here so we get five loops like this. I want to try and make sure that we have uh, the end and the beginning pretty much on the same uh, like elements. So I'm going to say 4.5. That way, both of them are like perfectly horizontal there. Oop. Let's go top view. So these guys are going to be here. Definitely thinner. So I'm going to go radius, make them thinner. The height is also smaller. Yeah, that seems that seems about right. And uh, now one thing it does have, it's a little bit of a curvature. So I'm going to delete history for transformation. I'm going to go into the form, nonlinear bend, and I'm going to bend this thing. Just need to rotate that line, the, the gizmo that we get, the, that manipulator. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees so that when we bend this thing, we're bending it like this. There we go. I am going to delete history again on this thing. And I'm going to rotate this thing slightly like, actually, no, that's, that's fine. So now what I need to do is I need to, oh, let's grab this guy. 
I need to grab this guy and this guy. I need to extrude them like this. However, you see that we have a little bit of an issue there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude here a little bit just to, to start creating like the, the forward facing uh, curvature. Let's do another extrude. I'm using W and just movement because I know that that's, it's not going to be such a big deal if we just start pushing it like this. I'm going to turn on the screen rotate so that we can cal calibrate this a little bit better. There we go. And then extrude. And then we go like this. Now here, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete some of these faces. I'm going to say mesh fill hole. Grab this guy right here. And I'm going to extrude from here to that position over here. So yeah, the, the, the lines are not going to be exactly at the same height, but I don't think that's going to be that much of a deal. I am going to delete that. Let's just move this so that we get a, a nicer transition there. That looks, that looks okay. Just grab these two guys. Uh, edit mesh, poke. It's going to convert those into triangles which is going to be nicer topology. Grab these two guys, uh, just a small bevel, two fractions. So when we press that, we're going to get that effect right there. And if we take a look at the top view, that looks very good. I actually like the symmetry there. It, it makes it a little bit more interesting, more like handmade. So uh, yeah, that's good. So grab these two guys. Let's turn on this guy right here and let's position them where they're supposed to be. So roughly about there. Now, if you want to, you can definitely go here and start erasing things that, that you don't uh, need anymore. Since the, the reference has already has has been modeled already, we can we can definitely skip them. And, and the, the little piece is going to start looking more and more like uh, like what we're going for. Let's delete that curve. Let me save. I haven't saved. I've been working for we've been working for about 30 minutes and we haven't saved. That's that's dangerous. Um, so let me save this as uh, Firefly. And one thing I always do, file, increment, and save. Look, just to have a, another copy. And now every time I save, I'm not going to save on top of this file. I'm going to be doing increment and save, which is control shift S. Some people like the auto save feature, which is uh, right here on the... Do, 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 do. Where is it? Save actions. No, it's not save actions. I honestly don't remember. I never use it. I, I don't use the, the autosave. And the reason I don't like the autosave is because sometimes you're doing like simulation or, or animation or something and Maya is processing. And at the same time, the autosave goes into full uh, throttle and then it, it uh, crashes. So I, I personally don't use it. Okay. So we got the wing membranes and we got the little uh, thing right here, the, the light bulb, which is, is looking good. Now, if you want to, some people like to do this. We could start uh, doing some basic like rendering ideas just to see how this thing will look. So let me show you real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna just add a sky dome light. And remember we had the the sky dome from the from the grenades. This one right here, which is fine. So let me save here. And if we were to render this, let's just give it a couple seconds. I'm listening to some very nice tunes. Uh, the name is Para for Cuba. Uh, look it up. It's, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, we have this looking good. Those are just basic materials. I am going to go here and change this to GPU. So now every time we do a render, it's always going to be a GPU. By the way, quick parenthesis. Uh, there's another render engine that I like to use. Maybe we'll do some videos later on if you want me to. Just let us know in the comments. Uh, it's uh, Renderman. Uh, I've been using Renderman for quite a while, and um, I, I like both of them, like Arnold and Renderman. They're my go-to render engines. And Renderman, the new Renderman 24, if you buy the, the full license, you get XPU, which is a faster render that combines both CPU and GPU. In this case, we're only using GPU, but by combining them, you get like really, really fast times. The demo that they've been showing, it's, it's pretty cool. So let's go here to the backside. I'm going to grab this lamp. I'm going to assign a new material. 
Arnold, let's go AI standard surface. And on the presets, we have glass. So I'm just gonna replace the whole thing with glass. And if we take a look at the render now, look at the light bulb, looking really good. You can see the distortion there on the on the side and that's what we're uh, going for. Now on the concept though, the uh, the light bulb is, is yellowish. So here on the, on the color, we can definitely give this sort of like amber look to the to the whole thing. Or sorry, it was not the specular. It's on the transmission. So let's copy the. We can be both of them. The transmission. There we go. Look at that beautiful thing. Let's decrease the. Uh, you always want to keep the value all the way to the top, but we can decrease the saturation, so it's not super intense. Something like that. And now we're gonna grab the little coil there. And there's two things we can do with the coil. We can make it glow and with, with like an actual light, or we can uh, just add a glow on the material. I'm gonna go for the light, but before, before we do that, I'm gonna say a light bulb coil geo. And this is just, just a light bulb. Seriously, guys, you, if you like like this sort of like house uh, electronic music, you definitely need to listen to this guy. It's pretty cool. Uh, so light bulb geo, light bulb coil, we can pair one to the other so that when we move the light bulb, everything else moves with it. And if we grab this light bulb coil geo, we can go to Arnold lights and we can make it a mesh light. So now that coil stops being a geometry and it becomes a light source. So if we render this, let's just give it a couple seconds. I'm just gonna stop it. It is heavy. Light meshes are heavy or tend to be heavy. Mm. Seems Maya crashed. Let me take a look. No, things are moving. So, so that's fine. Okay. Let's give it Maya a couple of seconds. Meanwhile, let me open Photoshop and I'm gonna explain how we're gonna be building other parts of the of the thing. There we go. Okay, so the light is there, it's just not intense enough. So I'm gonna go here in exposure, let's do like 10. You can see the light now actually like on the on the reflections. I am gonna use a color temperature, I'm gonna make it warmer, and I want the light to be visible. So that way we're going to be able to see the little coil there. 10 is definitely too much. Something like this, I think. Uh, let me see if I can change the color again to like this amber. Nope. Which is fine. Like normally the, the filament of, uh, of, um, of a light bulb is going to be uh, completely white, right? Like the, the light. You're going to see the, the temperature that it, it uh, gives is going to be or can be very warm. But the actual filament is going to be uh, like this. So now if we take a look at the, at the whole thing, we got that little guy right there. Now imagine that thing on a scene, like on an actual scene, like I, I'm thinking about doing like a, like a tree branch, like a realistic tree branch with leaves and everything, like a little bit of focal depth and stuff, uh, or depth of field, sorry. And then a couple of these guys like flying around. I think that that's gonna be a nice composition for the for the final thing. Now imagine the textures like old metal, like rusty metal. Oh, it's gonna look really, really good. And this is just this is just the beginning, right? So yeah, as you can see, just a quick render to get an idea of how this is gonna look. And this is very important because a lot of people think that on the on the production pipeline you're gonna be um, what's the word? A lot of people think that during the production pipeline, things are very linear. So you, you need to wait until the very end to see everything. And no, sometimes the director will come along, you'll show them this and they'll be like, hey, this is how it's looking. I think it's, it's, it's a good direction. But like, yeah, yeah, that looks good. Just just keep moving, you know, keep working on the, on the character. And, um, and it's a very, very common way to do it. Okay, so now we need to think about this next part, the, the main like body and Based on the time, that's probably going to be one of the last things we're going to do in this first video. This might be a longer series because there's a lot of things going on. Uh, so just uh, bear with me. Uh, I am going to grab this guy, the Sky Dome Light, and I'm going to group it. I'm going to call this Light uh, Setup. I'm just going to press H to hide it so that we don't need to be distracted by it for now. Uh, let's turn off the main body of the, of the Firefly. And uh, let's think about this thing for a second. So 
First question I need to ask myself, do I want this thing to bend? Are we going to be bending this thing or is this going to be like a, like a whole thing? It's probably going to be a whole thing, like a complete uh, element. Second, do I want to model this fibers that it has right here? I'm not sure what they are. Uh, they seem to be like um, some sort of pipes or something. Do I want to model them or do I want to texture them? That's a very important distinction. Based on the silhouette that I'm seeing here, I think we can get away with texturing them. We can't do that with this guys and maybe not even like this guys. Uh, so, so we're going to have to do a little bit of, uh, of invention here. So I am going to create a new cylinder, rotate this guy around nine degrees, make it bigger until we hit the, like the main volume here on the, on the body. Uh, let's give it a couple of divisions like uh, three divisions. This vertices, I'm going to move all the way here and scale them down again until we hit the roughly the, the, the distance that we have. These guys are going to be here. This guns are going to be all the way here. This ones are going to be here. Let's move this guys here. Roughly there. I'm gonna add a new line right about here. And I'm gonna scale it as well. Now, as you can see, the image has been drawn with a little bit of perspective, and we're working with a perfectly orthographic view. So things might not line up perfectly, but as long as we get as uh, close as possible to that to the proportions, we're gonna be fine. So I'm gonna grab this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, and I'm just gonna bevel. I'm gonna decrease the fraction. Because those guys that I just selected are going to be the borders that I were seeing there, those round elements. I'm also going to add one line down here with roughly the same proportion as, as the other ones. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to grab all of these loops. Remember to grab a loop, you grab one face, shift, double click the next one. And that will select the, the whole edge loop. Control E to extrude or extrude out. And then I'm going to grab all the borders here. And we're going to bevel. Two segments and a roughly big fraction. So we get a nice effect like this. Pretty cool, right? So now, as I mentioned, I think we're going to we're going to deal with these things as a separate textures. Like I, I don't want to um, I don't want to model like each individual uh, tube. There are materials and substance that we can use to to create that texture and make it look like that thing is uh, it's uh, a little bit more complex than it is. And with the amount of textures that we're going to be using, I think we, we should be fine. Uh, however, I do want to create a little bit of like an inside. It, it's not going to be hollow, uh, but I want to give the impression that things go through the whole thing. So I'm going to grab this guy right here. Control F11 It's a very nice shortcut. If you select the, the birds and you press control F11, that's going to be a selection of uh, you, you will convert the selection from anything to faces. So if that vertice is selected, all the faces that are attached to that vertice are going to be selected. Control E, I'm going to offset a little bit to create a little bit of a border and then control E again. And we're just going to push this in. Something like that should be fine. And to hold this edge and that one right there, we're going to bevel. So now when we press number three, we get this sort of like barrel looking shape. Uh, same thing over here. I'm going to grab this vertice, control F11, control E, push it in. Not that much, probably something like that. Just grab that border and that border, quick bevel there, small fraction, and that's going to hold the edge. Grab the whole thing and move it up until the light bulb is sitting nicely in there. I can use my move brush to snap it to the point there. Oh, see that? I didn't notice that. There's a little bit of a, of a problem there with the extrusion that could cause issues. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to delete this face like that. And then delete this island. And then this guy's right here. I'm just going to say edit mesh, merge to center. There we go. So now there should be no, no distortion there. Now, as you can see here, the uh, this thing is not like holding the light bulb like perfectly, which 
again, it's it's fine, but we can we can work it uh, in such a way that it looks a little bit nicer, right? So if we were to to take a look at this guy from from behind, I, I want there to be something. So I know that light bulbs sometimes have uh, this sort of like base. So I'm gonna create a cylinder, rotate this 90 degrees, snap it to this vertex back here, move it forward, and it's gonna be like uh, like the plug, right? Like where, where the cable will, will, will meet. Let me grab this guy right here. Let's go into, into vertex mode. I'm gonna erase the, the light uh, property right now. We'll, we'll add it later back in. So grab those vertices. And just to make this thing a little bit more symmetrical, move it like this. Now this new cylinder that I just created, let's give it something, right? Like like, like we want, we, we always want to add like some visual interest to things, especially things that we're inventing. Like we, we don't want just like a, like a normal cylinder and that's it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bevel the, the borders here and maybe like uh let's let me grab like all of the faces here i'm gonna extrude and offset in like this and then let's select this line bevel it small fraction and just give it a another line right there with a little bit of offset Let's bevel those to round them off and then, I don't know, like maybe add a couple of lines here. Something like this. We're just freestyling right here, right? This is not in the concept, but if, if I'm going to be seeing this thing from, from the back, I want there to be something interesting, right? So those little shadows or, or shapes will do the trick. I am definitely going to grab this vertices right here and see if we can push them closer like this. Yeah, that looks good. And now they're both inside of the elements. We could even, like, if we already like this shape, let's duplicate it, make it really small. Like this, just scaling them up. And let's use this as like the connector points, right? Later on when we do UVs, we're just gonna recycle the UVs. And again, this sort of uh, things that we do here, for instance, here, I'm going to add a new line and I'm going to use these vertices to, to kind of like push these guys over here. And then these guys, let's bring them back here. So they're a little bit more straight. Definitely need one support line there so that when we do number three, things look a little bit nicer. And again, when we look at this from behind, look at that amazing thing. That's going to look very, very cool. Another thing that I know uh, light bulbs usually have is this sort of like metallic uh, like coating on the back that, that kind of like screws together. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this face right here from the glass and I'm going to say edit mesh, duplicate to, to create another uh, like object. And then that duplicate object is going to shift P to unparent. Let's assign the, the basic Lambert material. I am gonna extrude it out. So we get a little bit of a border there for the for the light bulb. Pull a little bit more just to give a, a nice border there. Let's grab this interface, push it in. So we pretty much touch the, the inner side of the of the sphere there. And then I'm going to add a couple of lines here with my insert edge loop. Let me say real quick, uh, file, increment, and save. So we're going to go mesh tools, insert edge loop. And then I'm going to select this edge, this edge, this edge, bevel. A smallish fraction like that. Grab this guy, this guy, and this guy, 
extrude out. And when we press number three, we're going to get this sort of effect, which it's going to be barely noticeable. It's going to be there. It's hugging the surface of the glass. You can see it there. So I think we can make it a little bit thicker. So here's what I'm going to do. So I want those like uh, lines to be closer to the to the edge. So I'm going to press R, center pivot. I'm just going to start extruding so that we get that sort of effect. There we go. See how those are now really close to the border. Now I'm going to grab this edge right here. Extrude with R. I'm just going to scale in until we hit the glass or close to the glass as possible. Like there. And then control E. I'm just going to push in. I'm definitely going to bevel this, guys. So you get that small casing there. And it's the, the kind of details that people don't notice, but uh, believe me, they, they, they will make you a better modeler. So I'm just going to grab this edge right there. Uh, where is it? Because we have a little bit of a, of a problem there. This one right there. Just get the face in. And just to close the whole thing, just going to bridge. They have the same amount of faces, so a bridge should be fairly uh, simple. Small fraction there. Oh, There we go. We get this nice little piece there. That again, it's, it's just going to add a little bit of extra visual interest to the to the whole thing. So we created all of these elements um, just to just to add this sort of effects to the to the B body. Uh, now let's see how are we going to solve this lines right here. We have two lines right there that are like bending on top of the element. So let me think how we would handle those. It, it's it's a relatively easy process. Let me see if, if it works. I'm going to control E to extrude this phase right here. So that's going to create like the border there. And then I need to just like make sure that the topology flows in a nice way. And this means that we are going to have a couple of triangles here. So for instance, I'm going to delete that inner face right there. And this inner face right here. I'm going to select vertices and merge these two guys. Merge to center. Same for these two guys. Merge to center something similar on this side. Grab this guy and this guy, merge to center. This guy and this guy, merge to center. And then this guy and this guy, merge to center. And this guy and this guy, merge to center. And we're going to have this flow where we create this little element. Now, the problem here is the uh, the edge loops, right? Because I need one edge loop here and one edge loop here that's going to really make the whole thing a lot more, uh, a lot nicer. And I'm going to try and add one here and one here. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, the issue with that is that we get this very weird lines going into into the, the sides of the elements like here. And uh, I mean, it's not perfect. It's not it's not horrible either. Uh, but it's not perfect. So one thing we can do to relax this element is I can grab this, this edge right here. Uh, this one, this one, and uh, that small one right there. And there's a tool here on Mesh Tools called Slide Edge, which I should be able to use to bring it like closer to this area. And that's going to soften the transition. We're still going to see a little bit of a bump there, which is fine. But we're going to get this uh, nice transition there. Uh, now in the top view, let me see the, the concept again. Yeah, I think that's fine. I can't unfortunately add one line right here because if I do this, what's going to happen is all the cylinder, as you can see, is going to get this very sharp line going through the through the sides, and uh, and that's going to really mess up the the elements. We could try sliding a couple of edges around, but it's it's not really the the answer. So I'm going to have to keep it like without this element, like this. So yes, we do have a little bit of a pinch there, but I don't think that's the end of the of the world. We're going to have dirt and stuff uh, hiding some of the elements there, and that should be fine. Another thing we could do, though, is I could, 
I create a little bit of a hole edge here with the with a triangle like there that's gonna keep it really sharp and since the triangle is really close to this area uh, we're not going like anywhere right so that, that could work so I'm just gonna continue this over here like this and uh, and that's gonna hold the edge very nicely and again, this area right here, we're just gonna add a um, uh, dirt and stuff to 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 give it a little bit more more depth to the whole thing because it looks really good down here, but then it, it kind of softens up uh, on this area right here. Um, but that's fine; we can work with that. So let me very quickly do it on this side so that we are all on the same page. Uh, another way in which I think we could do it is delete this face, delete this faces. And then I can just say from here to here, bridge. Wait, is that the one? Yeah, that's the one. So we bridge there and we bridge there. That's another option. And then we just grab this two vertices, merge to center. Two vertices, merge to center. Yeah, we got the, the proper shape. So same deal, we add a support edge right there, a support edge right there, a support edge right there, and a support edge right there to keep this very sharp. One here and one up here. And then to solve that little uh, effect there, we do the same trick that we did before. We anchor a point right there, and then we just go to this area right here. There we go. Uh, there seems to be an end on there. Let's just delete that end on. And we get this effect. Finally, we grab this edge right here and to avoid having that weird uh, pinch we use our mesh tools we do a slight edge and we slide this down to roughly the halfway point that's gonna that's gonna soften the whole thing so yeah we have a couple of like weird areas i don't think we have an end one quick way to check if you've had uh, if you have an end is select your object and then go into mesh clean up you're going to select matching polygons and let's go faces with more than four sides. Hit apply. And if nothing is selected, then you don't have an angle and you don't have angles and, and everything is, is working fine, uh, which in this case it is. So perfect. Uh, finally, how are we doing on time? Oh, almost there. Finally, we're going to be doing a, the little bolts that we have there. So I'm just going to use a sphere. Now, since I know that these spheres are going to be smoothed, I'm going to go with a 12 sided uh, sphere. That way we save a little bit of polygons and it's not as heavy. Oh. Let's scale it to the proper size. Duplicate. It's going to be there. Duplicate. In this case, they're going to be here. Grab all of the four spheres. Move them up, and now we need to make sure that they're in the proper depth. A little bit of randomness is also going to go a long way, so so it's fine if they're not perfectly aligned. It's going to make the, the object look a little bit nicer or more handmade. Now we can grab all of these elements, the, except for the light bulb, of course. Just... Uh, the frame of the of the character and and the spheres we're going to combine them and look at this beautiful thing the history freeze transformation center pivot and this is going to be called firefly body underscore geo let's do a quick cleanup remember cleaning it's always always important so um this one we're going to call r underscore wing this is going to be r underscore wing membrane it's going to be L, because it's the left one. 
and then this is going to be L as well. Uh, I have a lot of cameras here that I created by accident, so let's just delete them. What's this? We have an invisible cylinder. No, that's the, that's the main body of the, of the thing. So let's go on the guy. And look at this, guys. Like, only one video, and we're already almost halfway through with the <laughs> with the construction of the little uh, firefly. So uh, this is definitely looking good. Let me add a quick uh, just background here, part of our lighting setup, so that when you see the render on the thumbnail, it looks it looks a little bit nicer. Something like this. Whoop, we smooth out. We turn off our light setup here. Let's find a nice frame. Uh, let's turn this around so that it's not, we don't see the back camera. I'm gonna go to the, what's this? Let's call this light bulb uh, glass geo. There we go. Uh, delete history. I actually wanna wanna get them out of the of that group. I don't know what that group was doing. Let's find a nice frame like this. Let's grab our light bulb uh, coil and let's do the thing that we did before. Light. Let's do a mesh light. Save real quick. And now if we hit render, we get this. Now the coil, let's do six. Visible light, temperature, warm light. Look at that. Let's increase the exposure a little bit. Great, right? Look, even even the, the transparency on the wings is already showing. So even though we've just started, guys, this is just the beginning. This is just the first lesson. Uh, things are looking very, very nice, as you can see here. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll see you back next Monday. Uh, not next Monday, next Tuesday. When we continue with this project, we're going to continue modeling the rest of the, of the front of the body, the connection with the wings. We're later going to texture this guy, do a nice little render, and, and finalize with a nice presentation. So hopefully you've liked this. Uh, um, productions uh, until now. Uh, leave your comments down there. If you like, tell us what you want to see. Uh, if there's a technique that you would like me to explore on this character, let me know and I'll be happy to, to explore that uh, tool or technique. Um, check out our premium courses, of course. Leave a like, subscribe and share. I'll see you back on the next time, guys. Bye-bye.